The movie begins by showing a man named John Randolph Bentley being used as an experimental subject in East Berlin in 1973. Shortly afterwards, a woman named Petra Andropov enters the room where John is kept, telling him that he will not be able to pass the final test. Petra then sings Are You Sleeping in French which surprisingly stirs something inside John emotionally. The scene then switches to show John on the battlefield, where he shoots at three targets and kills them. Surprisingly, John is still in the room where he was kept and the three targets are also in the room. Upon seeing John successfully completing his last test, Petra then told her partner, Dr. Maser, that John was ready to carry out a mission for them. After passing a series of tests and health checks, John was then given an injection of anesthetic by Dr. Maser, who said that John was his most promising experimental subject. Dr. Maser added that John would join a project called the Cicada Protocol, where John would be one of the sleeper agents who would follow certain prescripted commands when awakened, or activated, as seen when John suddenly turned into a cold-blooded killer after Petra sang Are You Sleeping? When Dr. Maser was about to leave the room, John immediately grabbed a pair of glasses which he then used to injure Dr. Maser. John tried to escape from the place, but several guards blocked him, so he had no choice but to fight against them. At the same time, John realized that his vision was starting to be impaired due to the effects of the anesthetic previously injected by Dr. Maser. So John then headed to the lab and injected adrenaline serum so that his body condition returned to normal. After injecting the adrenaline serum into his body, John found a male corpse and at the same time, there was a sudden alarm sound indicating that John's escape attempt had been discovered by Petra and her subordinates. When Petra and her subordinates entered the lab to find John's whereabouts, they accidentally looked out the window and found a male corpse lying on the road. Petra immediately told her subordinates to go downstairs to examine the man's corpse. When Petra was about to catch up with them, she suddenly realized an irregularity and decided to return to the lab. On the other hand, John was apparently still in the lab because he put his clothes on the male corpse, then threw the corpse out the window to distract Petra and her subordinates, while he pretended to be a corpse. But unexpectedly, Petra who realized something, returned to the lab and met John who was about to leave the room, so they got into a fierce fight. During the fight, John finally managed to escape after he cut Petra's little finger. John then escaped by jumping over the rooftops to avoid the pursuit of Petra and her subordinates, and finally managed to eliminate his trace so that they could not find his whereabouts. The scene then switches to the present and shows CIA agents at CIA headquarters in Langley, Virginia, who are tracking the whereabouts of a woman named Tara Coleman who is known to be in London. They then order a CIA agent named Matt Edwards who is in London to find the whereabouts of Tara, a journalist who once wrote an article about the Soviet Union's nuclear weapons that had been addressed to Washington. In the article, Tara mentioned the Stiletto 6, a decommissioned USSR nuclear missile that found its way to the black market. However, Tara was immediately discredited over the story, and eventually, her editor pulled it and fired her. Matt finally meets Tara who works as a cab driver after she was fired from her job as a journalist. Matt then tells Tara that a general from North Korea named Kwon has requested an audience with Tara specifically, which attracts the attention of the CIA. Matt then promised to restore Tara's reputation if she wore a recording device to the meeting, which she agreed to. Matt also informed Tara's decision to his team leader, Ellen Becker, who was at headquarters, so they prepared to carry out their plan. During the meeting, Kwon, who had learned that the CIA intended to intercept their conversation, then asked Tara to hand over the recording device while bringing up Operation Treadstone to mislead the CIA, and then destroyed the recording device. Afterward, Kwon implored Tara to stop a rogue faction in North Korea from buying Stiletto 6 launch codes from Yuri Lenyov, and to save his daughter in Paris, because his enemies would soon kill him. Although overwhelmed, Tara chose to help Kwon, and lied to the CIA when Tara asked if Stiletto 6 was mentioned during the conversation. Meanwhile, in Pyongyang, North Korea, a woman named So Hyun is seen watching her student play the piano because she works as a music teacher. After that, So Hyun picks up her son, Jin Woo, who shows her a game console that he found in the school locker. Upon seeing that, So Hyun immediately told her son to hide the game console from his father because game consoles and all products originating from the United States are strictly prohibited in North Korea. Not wanting to be scolded by his father and cause trouble for his family, Jin Woo promised that he would keep the game console a secret from anyone. The scene then switches and shows a man named Doug McKenna and some offshore oil workers doing their jobs. After finishing the job, they are gathered in a room and learn that the company they work for has decided to fire Doug and the other workers because they will be replaced by workers from Russia. Although Doug and his co-workers protest the decision, they can't do anything to convince the company officials to change the decision, so they can only lament their fate by drinking in a bar. Meanwhile, So Hyun, who is curious about the game console found by her son, tries to turn on the game console until she hears music that instantly activates something in So Hyun. When she destroyed the game console, she found a syringe and a piece of paper containing an address. In the bar, Doug met a woman named Carol and they had a pleasant conversation. Shortly afterwards, a Russian man approached Carol and tried to harass her. 
Doug tried to defend Carol, but the Russian man then hit Doug and told his comrades to beat Doug up. Surprisingly, Doug was able to fight back and managed to beat them, before finally deciding to leave the bar. Upon seeing that, Carol immediately chased after Doug and invited him to her house so that she could treat the wounds that he had after he fought against the group of Russian men. Upon arriving at Carol's house, Doug then told her that he didn't recognize himself, as if he had lost part of his memory. Shortly afterwards, Carol sang a children's song, and surprisingly, Doug immediately fell silent after hearing the song, as if the song made his body function stop in an instant. Meanwhile, in Kursk, Russia, an old man named Ivan gets a hearing aid that someone sends to him. When Ivan used the hearing aid, he heard a strange sound, so Ivan's wife asked him to hand over the hearing aid to her, then put it away. The next day, So Hyun headed to the address she found on the game console and realized that it was quite close to the apartment building where she taught piano. So Hyun then told her student to practice on their own, while she rushed to the address and met General Kwon who realized that So Hyun had been woken up. Kwon then asked who had woken her up, but she didn't know that either. Because So Hyun has been woken up, Kwon realizes that she was sent by someone to kill him, so he tries to defend himself. A fierce battle ensued between Kwon and So Hyun, until finally So Hyun managed to kill Kwon. Meanwhile, Doug suddenly woke up in a snow-covered area and found a photo of a woman in a bag. After checking the contents of the bag, he decides to leave the place. At night, Ivan secretly took the hearing aid when his wife was asleep to listen to a strange sound that made him curious. He then tried to find out where the strange sound came from and accidentally found the stairs leading to the underground passage. After walking down the hallway, Ivan found a door and seemed excited to find out something hidden behind the door. However, before Ivan could open the door, he was suddenly surprised by the appearance of his wife who immediately killed him. Ivan's wife then opens the door and it is revealed that she is none other than Petra and what is hidden behind the door is the Stiletto 6 that is being targeted by Kwan and the CIA. The scene then switches to the past and shows Petra mobilizing her subordinates to chase John who escaped to an American safe house for help. Shortly afterwards, Petra manages to track John to the place, but John is able to evade Petra and her subordinates and steals one of Petra's men's cars, then rushes away from the place. Sometime later, John finally made it back to the CIA headquarters, where he then met a fellow agent named Frank whom he had saved on a mission that led to John being captured by Petra and her gang. John seemed surprised when his colleagues thought that he was dead, even though he was only gone for a week. However, Frank told him that John had been missing for nine months, so it was only natural that everyone thought he was dead. After that, Frank took John to see their superior, Dennis Kohler, who then told John to tell him everything he knew when he was captured by Petra and her gang. John then told him about Dr. Mason and his project called the Cicada Protocol. John added that he tried to maintain his common sense during the torture, but Dennis didn't believe it at all and instead accused John of being a traitor. Dennis then ordered his subordinate to kill John, but John easily defeated the man and paralyzed Dennis. After that, John took Frank hostage so that he could escape from the CIA headquarters. However, when they were in the lift, the CIA agents who had been warned about John immediately attacked John and they got into a fierce fight in the lift. Despite having to fight alone, John managed to defeat the CIA agents who ganged up on him and then hit Frank so that Frank would not be suspected of being the one who had helped him. After paralyzing several well-trained CIA agents, John finally managed to escape from the CIA headquarters. In the present, Doug, who was on the plane on his way home to his wife's residence, suddenly woke up after having nightmares about his past. Elsewhere, Matt meets Ellen to discuss General Quan's death and also Operation Treadstone which Quan had previously mentioned when meeting Tara. Ellen then reveals to Matt that Quan was involved in the Cicada Protocol, so he knows about Operation Treadstone which has been running since the Cold War. After killing Ivan, Petra tries to contact someone by phone, but the phone number turns out to be expired, so she then decides to leave her house. Meanwhile, in Paris, Tara who is tracking the whereabouts of Quan's daughter, Zhang Mi, gets a phone call from Matt who informs her about Quan's death. Matt also warns that Zhang Mi might be in danger, so he tells Tara to find Zhang Mi immediately and protect her. In Pyongyang, So Hyun is seen treating bruises on her body after her fight with Quan. After that, So Hyun took her son for a walk in the park, where Jin Woo then revealed that he actually didn't find the game console in the locker, but someone gave the game console to him while threatening to kidnap him if he told the truth to So Hyun. Upon hearing that, So Hyun hugged her son and calmed him down. At the same time, a policeman who was passing near them suddenly stopped and observed them with a suspicious look. The scene then switches to 1973 and shows Petra who is at the KGB headquarters and is scolded by her superior named Yuri Leniov for her failure in handling the Cicada Protocol so that John, one of the experimental subjects, managed to escape. Although Yuri is her superior at the KGB, outside of work, Yuri and Petra secretly have an intimate relationship. In the present, Petra who finally arrived in Moscow, then contacted a man to make an appointment and asked him to invite Yuri to the meeting. At the same time, Tara who is tracking Zhang Mi's whereabouts, finally finds Zhang Mi who is with her friends at Versailles Palace. 
Tara then introduces herself as an envoy from General Quan, but Zhang Mi doesn't immediately believe Tara's words, until Tara shows the necklace given by Quan to convince Zhang Mi. Afterwards, Tara tells Zhang Mi that Quan sent her to take Zhang Mi to meet someone at the Ecuadorian embassy in Paris and informs her that Quan is dead. Zhang Mi is shocked to learn that her father is dead, especially after Tara tells her that the person who killed Quan is targeting Zhang Mi and planning to kill her. Later that evening, Doug finally arrived at his house in Ashland, Kentucky, and met his wife, Samantha, who was very happy to see her husband's return. Doug then told Samantha that he had been fired from his job. At the same time, So Hyun who was having a conversation with her husband, Dai Pak, suddenly got a visit from Colonel Shin who is Dai Pak's superior. Surprisingly, Shin turns out to be the policeman who observed So Hyun and her son in the park earlier this afternoon, and Shin's arrival at their house is to invite Dai Pak to go for a drink. After they leave, Jin Woo tells So Hyun that Shin is the one who gave him the game console. Meanwhile, Matt is seen watching a hypnosis show at a bar. After the show, Matt then approached a man named Martin Wells, a behavioral modification specialist who worked for the CIA during Operation Treadstone. Martin told Matt that he was already aware of several sleeper agents who had woken up, including one man who had shot up a convenience store. Therefore, Matt then invited Martin to meet one of the sleeper agents that they had managed to catch. Elsewhere, Doug, who woke up from a nightmare, took a photo of a woman he found in a snowy area and found an address behind the photo. After Doug checks the address on the internet, he decides to go to the address and discovers that it is the address of a bar. In Pyongyang, Dai Pak finally returns home and tells So Hyun that Shin has raised his rank and salary. Not only that, Dai Pak also informs So Hyun that General Kwon is a traitor, so So Hyun then remembers when she killed Kwon. Dai Pak then asks So Hyun to promise that she won't mention going to South Korea again, as Pyongyang is their only home. The following day, Tara and Zhang Mi, who are on their way to the Ecuadorian embassy in Paris, get into a tense chase with a car driven by a group of people who intend to kill Zhang Mi. Realizing that they can't avoid the pursuing people through the heavy traffic in Paris, Tara recklessly crashes her car into the pursuing car, sending both cars somersaulting through the streets of Paris. Tara rushes out of the car and takes Zhang Mi away before the men catch up with them again. After making their way through the crowd, Tara and Zhang Mi finally make it to the Ecuadorian embassy safely. The scene then switches to 1973 and shows John investigating a KGB facility in East Berlin, which used to be the place where Petra and her subordinates held John. However, John finds nothing in the place other than a watch that belonged to Petra. Shortly after, a janitor informs him that all the workers in the lab have been moved elsewhere. In the present, Petra, who is now living in her old house in Moscow, gets a visit from a woman named Maria who claims to be her neighbor. Petra tries to be friendly and invites Maria to enter her house. When Maria is already inside Petra's house, surprisingly, Petra immediately attacks Maria and the two then get into a fierce fight. Although Maria was much younger than her, Petra managed to knock her down and grab the gun that Maria had hidden under her clothes. Without further ado, Petra immediately killed Maria because she already knew that Maria was a spy sent to kill her. In Washington, Ellen who was having lunch with her husband suddenly got a phone call from Matt who informed her that he was in front of the apartment belonging to Stephen Haynes, a sleeper agent who carried out the shooting at the convenience store. Matt and Martin intend to conduct an investigation at Haynes' apartment, but Ellen then prevents them because it could cause problems, because they have not received official permission to conduct an investigation. However, Matt ignored Ellen's warning and entered the apartment. While walking through Haynes' apartment, Martin tells Matt that not all of the candidates who were the subjects of Operation Treadstone's experiments succeeded in becoming the sleeper agents who would carry out successful missions, as many of the candidates eventually lost their minds. Afterwards, Matt and Martin visit Haynes in prison, where Haynes informs them that someone has woken up the sleeper agents of Operation Treadstone by sending them something that can activate them into an assess along with the names, photos, and addresses of the targets they must kill. Martin tried to find information about the person or group that had woken the sleeper agents by hypnotizing Haynes, but the attempt failed as Haynes suddenly became hysterical and lost control. The next day, Doug gets a phone call from his friend who offers him a job, but he declines the offer because he has other work to do. After that, Doug visits a bar to track down the whereabouts of the woman in the photo. When Doug asked the bartender at the bar about the woman, a man was seen secretly watching Doug from a distance. Meanwhile, Dai Pak invites So Hyun to attend a party that will be held later that night. However, So Hyun is intrigued by a folder with Stiletto 6 written on it on Dai Pak's desk. So Hyun then asks her husband about Stiletto 6, but Dai Pak only tells her that Stiletto 6 is a secret project he's working on, then ignores So Hyun. In New Delhi, India, a waitress named Neera Patel receives a message showing a photo of a man whose face is circled in red. After getting the message, Neera immediately tracks the man's whereabouts and finds him in a crowded center. Neera then persuaded the man to follow her into a deserted alley, where she then sprayed something into the man's eyes, then left him. 
Shortly afterward, the CIA agents at Langley watched a television news report about an heir to Germany's largest pharmaceutical company who was found dead in New Delhi, India, after his eyes were sprayed with aerosol. The man is none other than the man approached by Nira, who is apparently assigned to kill him. The scene then switches to 1973 and shows John in an area of West Berlin. John is seen calling Frank to ask Frank to help him prove that he is not a traitor. Upon hearing that, Frank asks John to come to his house. Upon arriving at Frank's house, John then revealed that he had killed three CIA agents during a mission in Budapest. However, John excused himself by saying that he committed the murder unconsciously because he was under the influence of hypnosis. Unexpectedly, Frank did not believe John's words and instead reported about John's presence in his house to Dennis. Not long after, Dennis arrived at Frank's house and pointed a gun at John. Rather than capture John however, Dennis believed John's story about his mind being altered, and so Dennis shot Frank and tasked John with hunting down Petra Andropov in Budapest. If John could bring Petra to him or learn the Soviet secrets of how to create more sleeper agents, Dennis would wipe his record clean. In the present, Petra meets the man she contacted by phone in a hotel, and immediately threatens him for thinking that he had sent Maria to kill her. Although he denied that he had sent anyone to kill Petra, Petra was already suspicious of him and decided to kill him. At the same time, at the Ecuadorian embassy office, Tara is seen encouraging Zhang Mi who is still in shock over everything that happened to her, from the death of her father to dealing with people who intend to kill her. After calming Zhang Mi down, Tara then meets Ecuadorian ambassador Hector, who informs her that a group of military officials in North Korea have been collecting funds to purchase nuclear weapon launch codes. General Kwan, who learned about the fund of 500 million in cryptocurrency, decided to steal it. Hector then gave Tara a flash disk that she could use to access the fund, and told her to buy the launch codes for Stiletto 6. After getting this information, Tara immediately called Matt and told him that she was going to Ghana to meet her friend who could help her find the whereabouts of the missile. In Pyongyang, So Hyun is seen taking her son to meet her mother who works in a military camp. While Jin Woo is with his grandmother, So Hyun secretly meets a colonel named Lee who orders her to change the SIM card in Colonel Shin's mobile phone so that he can be accused of being a traitor. At first, So Hyun refused to carry out the order from Lee, but Lee showed the syringe used by So Hyun to kill General Kwan and threatened to imprison Jin Woo and her mother if So Hyun failed to carry out the mission. Not wanting Jin Woo and her mother to be in danger, So Hyun has no choice but to comply. The scene then switches to New Delhi and shows Nira who looks a little anxious as there are many police patrolling the streets. Shortly after, Nira receives a message showing the flight schedule from New Delhi to Beijing, immediately realizing that she needs to pack her belongings and head to the airport. Later that evening, So Hyun and Dai Pak finally arrive at a party attended by North Korean military officials, including Colonel Shin. When Shin leaves the table without his mobile phone, So Hyun jumps at the chance to change the SIM card in Shin's phone. Unexpectedly, So Hyun accidentally dropped the SIM card, and when she was about to pick it up, a man suddenly appeared and asked her to play the piano on stage. At first, So Hyun seems a little anxious, but she then climbs the stage and starts playing the piano while remembering the moment when she killed General Kwan. Not long after, So Hyun suddenly stopped playing the piano and hurriedly left the party. Meanwhile, Doug, who was at his house, was surprised by the arrival of a man named Lowell, who was none other than the man who watched Doug at the bar. Lowell said that Doug had to come with him because they had to reprogram Doug's memory after Doug messed up during a mission in Antarctica. However, Doug refuses to go with Lowell, so the two of them then get into a fierce fight. In the middle of the fight, Lowell said that Doug could ask Samantha if he forgot his mission. At the same time, Samantha appeared and immediately shot Lowell and killed him. Samantha looks shocked because she never intended to kill someone. Doug then says that he doesn't know Lowell and doesn't understand the mission mentioned by Lowell, and Samantha admits that she doesn't know Lowell either. Doug tells Samantha that he might have messed up his work in Antarctica, but Samantha doesn't seem to care too much about that, because all they have to think about right now is Lowell's body that is still in front of their house. Doug and Samantha then agree to get rid of Lowell's body by dumping it somewhere. In Pyongyang, So Hyun apparently ran to the military camp to free Jin Woo and her mother. Although So Hyun tried to infiltrate secretly, Colonel Lee found out about So Hyun's presence in the place and they immediately got into a fierce fight. Surprisingly, Colonel Shin suddenly appeared on the scene and immediately killed Lee who called Shin a traitor who had killed General Kwan. After killing Lee, Shin then tells So Hyun that he will always be her friend and all she has to do is obey all his orders. Shin then gives So Hyun a piece of paper as a clue for her next mission while saying that he will guarantee the safety of her family. Meanwhile, Matt and Martin meet Haynes who has calmed down after he went berserk because Martin tried to hypnotize him. Martin then tries to hypnotize Haynes a second time as they need to get information on whoever has woken up the sleeper agents of Operation Treadstone. However, Haynes again lost control and attacked Matt and Martin until they collapsed unconscious. At the same time, Doug and Samantha intend to bury Lowell's body in the middle of the forest. 
While Doug was digging a hole to bury Lowell's body, Samantha did some things that professional hitmen usually do to eliminate the identity of their victims to make it difficult for the police to investigate. Doug thought that their lives were ruined after Samantha committed the murder. But Samantha argued that she was just trying to save Doug and assured him that they would resume their normal lives after burying Lowell's body. In Pyongyang, So Hyun finally returns home with Dai Pak and Jin Woo. Upon seeing So Hyun who suddenly left the party and came back injured, Dai Pak asked about what exactly had happened to her. However, So Hyun didn't give any explanation to her husband, and promised that she would reveal everything when the time came. The following day, Matt finally woke up and found that Martin had died as a result of Hain's attack. As Matt was about to leave the place, he saw the injured policemen who were being treated by the medics. A policeman then informed Matt that they were attacked by Haynes who then fled towards the forest. Although Matt knew that the policemen had been mobilized to capture Haynes, he was determined to stop Haynes with his own hands. At the same time, Ellen, who had just arrived home and intended to have dinner with her family, suddenly got a phone call from Matt informing her that Haynes had escaped. Matt told Ellen that he planned to catch Haynes, but Ellen immediately opposed it because Haynes was a highly trained and dangerous sleeper agent. But Matt ignored Ellen's warning and rushed off into the forest. In the meantime, Doug and Samantha finally arrived at their home after burying Lowell's body. While cleaning the house, Doug accidentally found a suitcase in which there was a document that explained a glimpse of his past as a secret agent and also his mission to kill a woman. Upon seeing that, Samantha finally reveals that Doug is actually an important asset of the CIA and she is Doug's instructor at the training camp located in Virginia. Samantha added that Doug was specially trained to be a cold-blooded killer. Doug seems shocked to learn that and tries to evade her by saying that he doesn't remember anything about being an assassin working for the CIA. Samantha tells Doug that he won't remember anything because his memory has been programmed in such a way that he can complete his missions. Elsewhere, Ellen is seen meeting a man named Dan Levine who is her superior in the CIA. Levine seems annoyed to learn that Haynes managed to escape, so he then orders Ellen to keep Operation Treadstone a secret from anyone. Meanwhile, Matt, who was tracking Haynes' whereabouts in the middle of the forest, met a policeman walking from the opposite direction. Matt who suspected the policeman then told him to stop and Matt finally found out that the policeman was none other than Haynes in disguise. Haynes then told Matt that he had to run away because he just wanted to meet his daughter to say goodbye. Upon hearing that, Matt then asked Haynes to help him find the person or group that had awakened the sleeper agents of Operation Treadstone. Matt added that he would take Haynes to see his daughter if Haynes was willing to help him. After some consideration, Haynes finally accepted Matt's offer and they left the forest. Elsewhere, Samantha approaches Doug who is brooding on their porch as she tells him about the photo of a woman they found in the suitcase. Samantha says that Doug's mission is to kill the woman and the red circle in the photo is a trigger that can hypnotize Doug into carrying out his mission. But Doug seems to be immune to the hypnosis, so Lowell is sent to reprogram Doug so he can complete his mission. Doug, who was reluctant to commit murder, then told Samantha that he did not want to carry out the mission. However, Samantha tells Doug that the CIA will continue to send agents like Lowell, maybe even a special forces unit until Doug successfully completes the assassination mission. The following day, So Hyun follows the clues given by Shin and arrives at a residential area outside Pyongyang. So Hyun then entered a shop to meet an old man named Kim and handed him a piece of paper. Kim, who knew that So Hyun was a secret agent, took a box containing a folder and some money and gave the folder and money to her, saying that a man was waiting for her. So Hyun doesn't seem to understand what Kim is saying, until finally she meets a man who will take her to Beijing. Later that night, Doug, who has no other choice, intends to carry out his mission to kill a woman who is his target. Samantha drives Doug to a deserted street, where Doug is picked up by a group of men who plan to commit a heist at a drug factory. When Doug infiltrates the drug factory, he finds the woman who is his target in a room and realizes that she might be the owner of the drug factory. Instead of helping his group, Doug switches on the lights which causes the position of his group members to be known by the enemy, so a shootout between them is inevitable. In the middle of the shooting, Doug was able to easily defeat his opponents who were blocking his path to get to where the woman was. On the other hand, the woman who became Doug's target, knowing that she was being targeted, then rushed to escape with her bodyguards. Doug immediately chased his target and surprisingly, he met his friend, Mike, who was working for the woman. Doug then told Mike to leave the factory immediately, while he continued to chase until he finally managed to kill his target. The scene then switches to 1973 and shows John who has arrived in Budapest to track down Petra. John then enters a bar and asks the bartender about Petra's whereabouts. But the bartender refuses to give any information about Petra and instead threatens John at gunpoint, saying that John is being targeted by many people. Upon hearing that, John immediately turned to face him and quickly grabbed the gun, paralyzing the bartender. Knowing that there would be people coming to kill him, John immediately devised a plan to trap them in the place. Shortly after, a group of men were seen entering the bar brandishing guns. One of the men then tried to switch on the lights, but unexpectedly, there was a huge explosion that killed them. 
After defeating them, John turns back to the bartender and asks about Petra's whereabouts while threatening him at gunpoint. In the present, Tara finally arrives in Ghana to meet her friend, Megan, and asks Megan to help her meet Sebastian who is currently in prison. With the help of Megan's brother who is a prison guard, Tara finally meets Sebastian who is her childhood friend. Sebastian seems happy when he meets Tara, but when Tara mentions the Stiletto Six, Sebastian's demeanor suddenly turns cold and leaves her immediately. The scene then switches to 1973 and shows John visiting the room he used to rent in Budapest. John tries to look for clues in the place and finds a secret room behind a mirror. When he enters the secret room, John finds a video recording showing him cruelly torturing a man who is his partner. John looks shocked to see the footage because he never thought that he was capable of such sadism. Shortly afterward, the innkeeper appeared and told John that John used to work for the KGB. But John denied it, saying he didn't remember working for the KGB. The innkeeper said that John joined a special project being developed by the KGB, where the experimental subjects in the project would lose all their memories and the KGB would reprogram their memories to carry out missions that could benefit the KGB. In the present, Tara, who managed to catch up with Sebastian, then said that Yuri Leniov would sell the launch codes for the Stiletto 6 missile on the black market and she wanted Sebastian to help her by contacting Yuri. However, Sebastian immediately rejected Tara's request because he didn't want to deal with Yuri anymore, especially since Sebastian was also in prison. Upon hearing that, Tara then went to Megan's brother, Kofi, to ask for help. The scene then switches to 1973 and shows John in a bar. As John is about to leave, he accidentally nudges a woman named Katia and they get into a pleasant conversation. Surprisingly, Katia recognizes John as a war veteran as she once took care of the administration related to the US soldiers involved in the Vietnam War. The next day, So Hyun finally arrived in mainland China after traveling by boat. Upon arrival in Don Dong, China, So Hyun was picked up by a man who would take her to her next destination. Not long after, the truck carrying So Hyun finally arrived in a forest and she was dropped off in the forest. In a Ganan prison, Kofi secretly gives a knife to an inmate while giving the inmate a little direction. During lunch, the inmate then approaches Sebastian and stabs him in the back. It all turns out to be Tara's plan to get Sebastian out of prison because she needs Sebastian to contact Yuri Leniov before he sells the Stiletto 6 launch code to someone else. Later that evening, Samantha approached Doug who was sitting glumly on their porch. Doug told Samantha that he had become a monster during the assassination mission, as he couldn't recognize himself anymore, not even remembering the cruel acts he committed while taking someone's life. The scene then switches to 1973 and shows Katia taking John somewhere, where she then gives John a candy that can make him high. In the present, So Hyun who traveled through the wilderness finally met Nera who was waiting for her. So Hyun then handed the folder to Nera and when Nera opened the folder, it turned out to be a document about Dai Pak Stiletto 6. Since Nera's mission was to kill So Hyun, she immediately attacked So Hyun and the two then got into a fierce fight. So Hyun tried to fight back when Nera used a gun, although in the end Nera managed to shoot So Hyun in her stomach. Seeing So Hyun who looked helpless due to the gunshot wound in her stomach, Nera then hurriedly left her. A few days later, Doug met Mike at his house and asked Mike to keep the incident at the drug factory a secret, including the fact that Doug was involved in the attack. But unexpectedly, the police arrived at the place to arrest Doug. With his skills as a trained secret agent, Doug was able to put up a fight and rushed to escape by riding his motorbike. However, one of the policemen caught up with him and managed to knock Doug down and render him unconscious. Meanwhile, So Hyun, who received a gunshot wound to her stomach, was seen hobbling to the nearest village to seek help. Not long after, So Hyun finally arrived at a village, but unfortunately, she immediately collapsed unconscious before she could ask for help from the villagers. The scene then switches to 1973 and shows Petra who is ordering her subordinates to track John's whereabouts, while John is still under the influence of candy from Katia that makes him stoned and unable to think clearly. Katia then approached John and helped him to start remembering his past. With Katia's guidance, John finally managed to remember some of his past when he chose to save Frank on a mission. John let himself be captured by KGB agents, where Petra then held him somewhere and asked several questions about the CIA and John's mission. Because John didn't say anything, Petra felt angry and immediately injected serum into John's neck which then made him collapse unconscious. Petra then approached Dr. Maser and asked him to make John an asset in the Cicada Protocol. In the present, Doug finally wakes up from his stupor and discovers that a policeman has captured him. Shortly afterwards, a man named Leo arrived at the scene and told the policeman that he would take Doug to the CIA headquarters. But surprisingly, Leo shot the policeman and asked Doug about Lowell. Doug told Leo that he didn't know Lowell's whereabouts at all, so Leo said that he would ask Samantha in a slightly threatening manner. Upon hearing that, Doug became angry and attacked Leo, shooting him. After seeing Leo who fell down, Doug immediately rushed away on his motorbike. Surprisingly, Leo managed to survive the shooting, and immediately left the place without realizing that Doug was secretly watching him from a distance, then followed him. 
In the meantime, So Hyun suddenly woke up and found herself in a clinic after a doctor saved her. The doctor asked So Hyun to rest because she hadn't fully recovered. However, So Hyun insisted on going to see her family immediately. Elsewhere, Ellen met Levine and told him that she hadn't heard anything from Matt. Levine then hands over a document about Haynes that mentions that Haynes was a war veteran before he joined Operation Treadstone. Levine insists that Ellen focus on finding Haynes because he is both a valuable and dangerous asset. Meanwhile, Haynes and Matt are seen heading somewhere while discussing Operation Treadstone. The scene then switches to 1973 and shows Petra and her subordinates physically and psychologically torturing John. Despite the cruel torture, John remains silent about the CIA and his mission, leading Dr. Masoner to assume that John is not an asset and intends to stop the testing process. In the present, Matt and Haynes finally arrived at the residential area where Haynes' daughter lived, because Matt had promised to take Haynes to meet his daughter. However, as they were about to get out of the car, Haynes realized that they were being stalked by a group of people in a car parked behind them. Haynes then tried to confront them with Matt's help, and the two managed to defeat them. Haynes then got into the car used by the scouts to look for clues and managed to knock out a woman who Haynes claimed was the one who had woken him up. Upon learning that, Matt immediately took a photo of the woman and sent it to Ellen so that she could trace the woman's identity. Ellen told Matt that the woman worked for an agricultural company, but Ellen hid the fact from Matt that the woman was one of the secret agents sent by the CIA to wake up Haynes. Knowing that one by one their agents were killed because they had woken up the sleeper agents of Operation Treadstone, Levine urged Ellen to solve the problem as soon as possible. The scene then switches to 1973 and shows John still remembering his past. At that time, after being physically and psychologically tortured, John was then thrown into a detention cell, where he then heard the voice of someone calling his name. Not long after, Petra came to visit John in his detention cell and brought food for him. Surprisingly, John then told Petra his name, so Petra seemed happy and told one of her subordinates to convey to Dr. Masoner that John was ready to undergo the next stage of the Cicada Protocol. In the following days, John did special training so that he could carry out every mission given to him perfectly. Because John was a highly trained soldier, he could easily follow every instruction given by Petra, so Petra seemed satisfied that John would be a valuable asset to the KGB. When John recalls the training he underwent during the Cicada Protocol program, his memory suddenly switches to a moment when he tortured a man named Matheson who was a CIA secret agent who was also John's partner. Matheson tried to remind John that John was a CIA agent, just like him. However, because John lost his memory due to the serum that Dr. Masoner continuously injected him with, John did not believe Matheson's words and sadistically mistreated him. John's memory then switches when he is in the room where he is held by Petra, where he is ordered to kill three of his other colleagues. At the same time, John who was trying to remember his past, was surprised by Katia who warned him to escape because the KGB agent suddenly ambushed the place where they were. So John followed his instinct to immediately escape, even though he had not yet regained his full consciousness. In the middle of the escape attempt, John was intercepted by several men who attacked him, but he could easily knock them down, until finally a car suddenly hit John and the driver of the car was none other than Petra who finally managed to catch John. In the present, Doug, who was secretly following Leo, finally arrived at a hotel and saw Leo meeting a woman named Anna in the hotel lobby. Doug then buys some equipment and steals a mobile phone to make an eavesdropping device so that he can hear Leo's conversation with the woman remotely. During Leo and Anna's conversation in the hotel room, Doug overheard Leo mentioning Doug and his plan to kill Samantha and a man named Marcus Sachs. Knowing that Samantha was in danger, Doug rushed to his house to warn her. Later that night, So Hyun finally arrived at her house and looked panicked when she couldn't find Dai Pak and Jin Woo anywhere. Shortly afterward, Colonel Shin appears and tells So Hyun that he has taken her family hostage while telling her that she must follow his every order if she wants to keep her family safe. After saying that, Shin immediately left So Hyun's house escorted by his men who drove several cars. So Hyun, who intends to save her family, then secretly sneaks into one of the cars escorting Shin so that she can find the whereabouts of her family. Meanwhile, Matt contacted Ellen over the phone to ask for advice on the next step they should take. Surprisingly, Ellen who had intended to reveal about Operation Treadstone by trying to get information from the sleeper agents, suddenly changed her mind and instead told Matt to kill Haynes. However, Matt refused to kill Haynes and still insisted on exposing Operation Treadstone, even though he had to do it alone. Ellen also informed Levine about Matt refusing to do their orders to kill Haynes, so Levine then ordered the other agents to kill Haynes. The following day, Doug and Samantha, who had known that the CIA agents would hunt them down, rushed to leave their house while carrying the things they needed. On the way, Doug told Samantha about Leo planning to kill a man named Marcus Sachs, and decided that they would save Marcus. The scene then switches to 1973 and shows John who has just woken up and realizes that he is in an abandoned factory with Petra standing in front of him at gunpoint. Petra then tells John that she only cares about him and she proves her words by killing her partner who has just arrived at the place. 
Even so, John does not necessarily trust Petra, but he has no choice but to work with her to defeat the KGB agents sent to kill him. In the present, Colonel Shin and his entourage finally arrive in Seoul, South Korea, to hold a meeting with the Russians. Upon arriving at the meeting location, So Hyun slipped out of the car and hurriedly left the place. Several people seemed to notice So Hyun as she walked down the streets of Seoul. So Hyun, who realized this, then deliberately stole a man's wallet that contained enough money to buy the items she needed. Meanwhile, Petra finally arrives at a dock and sees Yuri Leniov's luxurious yacht. Petra then entered a restaurant to find information about Yuri and found that Yuri was heading to the dock on a boat with a very tight escort. Upon seeing Yuri from a distance made Petra remember her past with Yuri which was full of struggles. After Yuri and his men arrived at the dock, Petra secretly followed Yuri who was about to return to his house. The scene then switches to 1973 and shows Petra and John entering a cinema to hide from the KGB agents who are chasing them. Petra then reveals everything to John and doesn't seem to care even though she is considered a traitor for revealing KGB secrets to a stranger. However, John, who still could not trust Petra, then became angry because Petra and Dr. Masoner had destroyed his life by making him kill CIA agents who were his colleagues. John who was upset finally decided to leave and leave Petra alone. In the present, So Hyun buys some clothes to change her appearance and buys some objects which she then assembles into a simple listening device to spy on Colonel Shin. At the same time, Tara finally arrives in Germany and prepares to carry out her mission with the help of Megan and Sebastian. But on the way, they are intercepted by a group of armed men who then arrest them. The scene then switches to 1973 and shows John accidentally meeting one of the CIA agents named Wilson who intends to kill him. John tries to escape, but Wilson catches up with him and a fierce fight between them is inevitable. Wilson accused John of treason and intended to kill John. However, John killed Wilson first and hurriedly left the place. In the present, a man named Reed meets Tara and her comrades who are held in a room. Reed tells Tara to give him the password so that he can access the 500 million in cryptocurrency stolen by General Quan. Because Tara refused to tell the password, Reed then killed Megan and threatened to kill Sebastian if Tara still insisted on keeping quiet. Tara, who no longer wanted to lose her friends, finally told Reed the password that could be used to access all of General Quan's funds. After successfully getting his wish, Reed then ordered his men to get rid of Tara and Sebastian. After the incident, Tara told Sebastian to leave her, because she did not want to involve the people she loved in the dangerous mission. Meanwhile, Petra is seen secretly observing Yuri who is holding a party at his house. At the party, Yuri greets one of his old friends, Senator Ray, and they are seen talking about something. Petra, who intends to kill Yuri, finally gets an opportunity where she can meet Yuri and talk to him alone. Yuri then tells Petra that people from North Korea intend to buy the launch codes for the Stiletto 6 missile. Upon hearing that, Petra became furious because Yuri had betrayed their own country just for profit. However, Yuri seemed to ignore Petra's words and revealed that all this time he had known that Petra had been stalking him. Yuri then orders his men to surround Petra while telling her to return to Kursk and guard the Stiletto 6 hidden under her house. The scene then switches to 1973 and shows John returning to Petra after he killed Wilson. John, who looked devastated and frustrated because he killed Wilson who was his colleague, then intended to end his life. But Petra immediately prevented him by saying that Matheson was still alive and was now being held somewhere. Petra also promised that she would take John to meet Matheson, so John finally undid his intention to end his life. John finally began to trust Petra and regarded her as his comrade. In the present, Tara, who intends to continue her mission, then contacts a man named Nala and asks him to help her overcome problems related to Operation Treadstone and the Stiletto 6 missile. After listening to her explanation, Nalan then asked Tara to go to Moscow, so she immediately booked a flight ticket to Moscow. Meanwhile, So Hyun, who has changed her appearance, then enters an ember to spy on Colonel Shin who will have a meeting with Yuri to buy the launch code for the Stiletto 6 missile. So Hyun, who saw Yuri and Shin entering the VIP room to make the transaction, then used her skills to seduce a male servant so that she could gain access to the VIP room to spy on them. In the meantime, Doug and Samantha finally arrived at Marcus Sachs' home in Virginia. Doug asked Samantha to wait in the car while he checked on the house. However, shortly after Doug entered Marcus' house, there was a sudden explosion, so Samantha rushed to catch up with Doug. Inside the house, Doug managed to save Marcus from the explosion, but Marcus' wife was hit by the rubble and appeared to be dying, so Marcus intended to save her. But Doug immediately prevented Marcus because he assumed that it was all a trap, because the real target of the murder was Marcus. Not long after, a man named Vincent appeared at the place and he was the person sent to kill Marcus by blowing up Marcus' house. Doug then gets into a fierce fight with Vincent, and is almost killed before Samantha arrives and saves him. Surprisingly, Samantha and Vincent knew each other, but that didn't make Vincent ignore his mission. In the middle of their fight, Vincent accidentally shot Marcus, so Doug immediately took quick steps to take Vincent down and finally managed to kill him. Unfortunately, Marcus and his wife ended up dead and Samantha was devastated that their efforts to save Marcus were in vain. 
Samantha also felt desperate because it was no longer possible for them to escape. But Doug didn't just give up. Doug then pretends to be dead and sends a picture of himself to headquarters so that they assume Doug is dead. After that, Doug disguised himself as Vincent because their faces were quite similar. Meanwhile, so Hyun finally manages to sneak into the VIP room where Colonel Shin is about to make a deal with Yuri. So Hyun secretly places an eavesdropping device in the room to listen to their conversation, and learns that Reed and his men are Yuri's men. On the other hand, Shin tells Yuri that he has prepared a scapegoat for the launch of Stiletto 6, who is none other than So Hyun's husband, Dai Pak. Upon hearing that, So Hyun finally learns that Shin has only been using her and her family. At the same time, Tara finally arrived in Moscow and met with Nalan who then helped her to get all the information about Yuri Lenyov. Nalan also ordered his team to find information about Yuri and found that Yuri was a former KGB secret agent who had important data and information that had been destroyed because it was considered a threat to world peace. Yuri was also involved in the creation of the Stiletto 6 and the Cicada Protocol project initiated by the KGB. Nalan then informs Tara that all information about the Cicada Protocol is stored in a heavily guarded KGB military facility. Meanwhile, the CIA agent sent by Levine managed to locate Matt and Haynes and asked Ellen for permission to kill Matt, but Ellen refused to give permission, so Levine then took over the ambush mission and ordered the agents to kill Matt and Haynes. However, when the agents surrounded the car driven by Matt, they did not find Haynes anywhere. Unbeknownst to them, Matt and Haynes had apparently devised a plan and Matt had deliberately lured the CIA agents to the place so that Haynes, who was hiding in a tree, could take them out. Matt then contacted Ellen over the phone and relayed their request. Once Ellen agreed, Matt surrendered, followed by Haynes. As Matt is led away by the agents, from behind he hears gunshots and realizes that Levine must have ordered them to kill Haynes. In Seoul, So Hyun, who has learned of Colonel Shin's plan, takes action to attack Shin and Yuri's men to stop their plan. However, as So Hyun struggles against their men, Shin and Yuri manage to escape and So Hyun becomes a fugitive by the police for causing chaos in the bar. On the other hand, Matt who had returned to the CIA headquarters, finally met with Ellen and questioned about Levine's decision to kill Haynes. Ellen confirmed that killing Haynes was the best decision because Haynes was a dangerous man. Matt then asked Ellen about Operation Treadstone and the agents sent by the CIA to wake up the sleeper agents. But Ellen refused to explain anything and immediately left Matt. Matt, who was curious, then sought information about a woman claimed by Haynes to be the one who had woken him up. Surprisingly, the woman turned out to be Carol, the same woman who had also woken up Doug. However, when Matt wanted to find out more information about Carol, his access was suddenly blocked by Levine who then ordered one of his men to watch Matt's every move. The next day, Tara disguised herself as a professor to infiltrate a heavily guarded KGB military facility to obtain information about the Stiletto 6 and the Cicada Protocol. With Nolan's help, Tara manages to trick the guards with her fake identity and enters a special room where there is a variety of secret information hidden by Yuri Lenyov. Tara managed to find documents about the Stiletto 6 and the Cicada Protocol, then sent the documents to Nolan and his team. Tara also found information about Petra Andropov and intends to meet her to find out more about Yuri Lenyov. In the meantime, Doug and Samantha finally arrived at Vincent's home in Washington. They then began searching for some of Vincent's belongings such as passports and cash that Vincent must have hidden somewhere. After searching for a long time, Doug finally managed to find some passports and cash hidden by Vincent in a display. After that, Doug changed his appearance to look like Vincent and learned Vincent's habits, including some of Vincent's languages. At the same time, So Hyun tried to escape after someone called the police and reported about her assault in the bar. So Hyun then stole a car to escape the police and drove to the US Embassy to seek refuge by saying that she had important information for the CIA. After saying that, the guards at the US Embassy immediately allowed So Hyun to enter and get protection from the Seoul police. The following day, Tara called Matt and informed him that Yuri had ordered his men to steal General Kwon's cryptocurrency access key and kill Megan. Tara added that Yuri was also involved in the Stiletto 6 missile project and the Cicada Protocol. However, unbeknownst to Matt and Tara, Levine secretly intercepted their conversation and found out about Tara's plan to meet Petra at her house. Some time later, Tara finally arrived at Petra's house located in Kursk. Petra welcomes Tara kindly and invites her to go inside, but she secretly keeps a gun behind her back. On the other hand, Matt, who finally found out that Levine had tapped his mobile phone, then bought a new mobile phone and avoided the CIA agent sent by Levine to follow him as much as possible. After making sure that he was already in a place where the CIA agent sent by Levine could not reach him, Matt then called one of his acquaintances, Van Roon, who was an inspector at Interpol located in Amsterdam. Matt informed Van Roon about a CIA agent involved in a global crime syndicate and asked Van Roon to help him deal with the problem. Matt also added that the CIA agent was involved in the murder of a woman in Germany, and also the murder of Haynes. Matt planned to explain everything to Van Roon in person, so he asked Van Roon to meet him once Matt arrived in Amsterdam. 
Surprisingly, Levy managed to intercept Matt and Van Roon's conversation, and he immediately ordered his men to call Ellen. Levine then revealed to Ellen that he had activated Operation Treadstone. Upon hearing that, Ellen immediately resigned from her mission because she no longer wanted to be involved in Operation Treadstone. But Levine then threatened to leak all of her dark secrets if Ellen refused to do his bidding. On the other hand, Doug was seen about to take a drug that Samantha claimed could counter the hypnotic effects of the program planted in his brain. Samantha then apologized to Doug because she had involved him in Operation Treadstone. But Doug didn't seem too bothered about it because everything had already happened. The next day, Samantha told Doug about the way she usually communicates with her group. After meeting with one of the members of her group, Samantha informed Doug that the leader of her group ordered her to wake up the sleeper agents who joined Operation Treadstone. Samantha then asked Doug to remain disguised as Vincent so that they would not be killed. After telling Doug everything, Samantha then got out of the car and met Leo who picked her up by car. Meanwhile at the CIA headquarters, Levine finally activates Operation Treadstone officially and orders his men to wake up the sleeper agents simultaneously and give them an assassination mission. Ellen seems unhappy with Levine's decision, but she can't do anything because Levine is her superior. The scene then switches to 1973 and shows Petra telling John that they will meet Petra's superior, Yuri Leniov, within the next hour. Petra says that John can rescue his partner, Matheson, who is being held captive by Yuri somewhere. Upon arriving at Yuri's place, Petra brought John before Yuri while informing Yuri that John was still under the influence of the cicada protocol run by Petra and Dr. Masoner. Upon hearing that, Yuri was quite impressed with Petra's devotion to him, and ordered one of his men to take John to Dr. Masoner's lab. In the present, Doug gets a mission to impersonate a professor and kill a man named Padre Vicuna who lives in Colombia. Meanwhile, Tara, who was already at Petra's house, finally revealed that her purpose to meet Petra was to ask her help to stop Yuri Leniov. Upon learning that, Petra then asks Tara to follow her somewhere because she wants to show her something. The scene then switches to 1973 and shows John finally arriving at the lab, where he meets Dr. Masoner who injects an anesthetic into John's neck. Before losing his consciousness due to the effects of the anesthetic, John vaguely sees Matheson's presence in the room. A few hours later, John finally woke up and found Matheson who was in the same prison cell as him. John, who still clearly remembered his purpose of coming to that place, then invited Matheson to work together so that they could escape from that place. But unexpectedly, Matheson refused the invitation and instead reported John to the guards. Matheson turns out to have been under the influence of the Cicada Protocol program, so that he cannot remember about himself in the past, because his memory has been reprogrammed. John tries to make Matheson realize his past as a CIA agent and their friendship. But Matheson said that he didn't know John at all. Shortly afterwards, Dr. Masoner arrived in the room and praised Matheson for his good progress. Dr. Masoner then placed a gun in front of John and Matheson and said that they would kill each other to determine who was the best among them. Upon hearing that, John and Matheson then engaged in a fierce fight for the gun. In the middle of the fight, John tried to wake Matheson up by mentioning his family, until finally John managed to grab the gun and shoot the wall next to Matheson. Shortly afterward, Matheson finally remembered everything and they worked together to escape from that place. With their fighting skills, John and Matheson defeated the guards with ease. They also freed the other prisoners, although not all of them were willing to go with them. When they were about to board a car, Dr. Masoner suddenly appeared and tried to convince John and Matheson to abandon their intention to escape. But Matheson immediately acted quickly by killing Dr. Masoner and telling John to leave the place immediately. In the present, on the way to Colombia, Doug tried to find information about his target and found out that Padre Vicuna was a tribal chief who was actively trying to stop illegal mining near his tribe's settlement area. Upon arrival at the airport, Doug was approached by someone who warned him that he only had 24 hours to kill Padre Vicuna. Not long after, Doug finally arrived at the tribe's settlement and began preparing everything to kill Padre Vicuna. While in his tent, Doug got a message from Samantha telling him that her group didn't trust her. On the other hand, Petra takes Tara to the location of the Stiletto-6 missile while revealing to Tara that the nuclear warhead has been deactivated and the nuclear payload has been removed by Yuri. At the same time, So Hyun, who is at the U.S. Embassy office in Seoul, urges the embassy officials to contact the CIA headquarters. Shortly afterward, Levine, who received a report about the Stiletto-6 missile that Colonel Shin wanted to buy from a Russian man named Yuri Leniov, then spoke to So Hyun who urged Levine to protect her family who was currently being held captive by Colonel Shin in Pyongyang. But Levine asked So Hyun to kill Colonel Shin first before he saved So Hyun's family. Upon hearing that, So Hyun agreed that she would kill Colonel Shin and warned Levine not to betray her. After reaching an agreement with So Hyun, Levine then orders Ellen to find information about Yuri Leniov and activate one of the sleeper agents near Yuri to kill him. Levine added that they should immediately wake up the sleeper agent remotely so that they can immediately carry out the assassination mission. 
At the same time, Tara who was chatting with Petra was suddenly startled by a mobile phone ringtone similar to the children's song used by Petra to wake John. When Tara reaches for her mobile phone, she gets an incoming message with a photo of Yuri Lenioff circled in red, which indicates that Tara is one of the sleeper agents of Operation Treadstone. Tara is immediately reminded of her painful and violent past. On the other hand, Petra seems surprised to learn that Tara is part of the Cicada Protocol and was assigned to kill Yuri Lenioff. Even so, Petra seems to support Tara by providing Tara with weaponry and providing important information about Yuri to make it easier for Tara to carry out her mission to kill Yuri. The scene then switches to 1973 and shows John and Matheson discussing Petra who is tasked with capturing people who will be used as candidates in the Cicada Protocol. Matheson adds that he will kill Petra if he sees her again. Meanwhile, Petra, who was at the cinema, realized that her hiding place had been discovered by the secret agents. Petra deliberately creates chaos in the cinema to distract the agents who are chasing her, although in the end they manage to catch Petra. In the present, Levine managed to get information about the Stiletto 6 missile warhead hidden by Yuri in a warehouse located in Cyprus. Ellen ordered the special forces to go to Cyprus and secure the nuclear warhead. In the meantime, Matt, who has arrived in Amsterdam and is about to wait for Van Roon's arrival, suddenly gets a call from Tara asking about Matt who is known to have protected a sleeper agent from Operation Treadstone. Unbeknownst to Matt and Tara, Levine had managed to intercept their conversation and track Matt's whereabouts in Amsterdam. Sometime later, Ellen was informed that the special forces she had sent had arrived at Yuri's warehouse in Cyprus and were preparing to carry out their mission. A shootout between the CIA special forces and Yuri's men becomes inevitable. At the same time, Tara finally arrived at Yuri's residence and immediately killed Yuri's men one by one. After defeating Yuri's men, Tara immediately rushed to the study to kill him, but Yuri immediately shot blindly at Tara. Even so, Tara, who is a trained soldier, was able to dodge the attack and attack Yuri up close, so they got into a fierce fight. However, Yuri manages to take Tara down when she is caught off guard, and immediately rushes away in a car. Meanwhile, the special forces sent by Ellen to Cyprus manage to defeat Yuri's men and secure the Stiletto 6 missile warheads. The scene then switches to 1973 and shows Petra being captured by CIA agents led by Dennis. Dennis reveals that all this time Petra has only been used by John who secretly slipped a listening device into Petra's jacket. Dennis tells her that John's mission is to uncover the truth behind the Cicada Protocol run by Petra and Dr. Masoner. In the present, Samantha tries to convince Leo that Doug has disappeared and Lowell, who was sent by Leo to their house, has also disappeared somewhere. But Leo doesn't take Samantha's word for it, so he decides to seek information about Doug from Anna. Shortly afterwards, Leo returned to Samantha and informed her that Doug was dead. Samantha pretended to look shocked and devastated when Leo told her about Doug's death, although she was relieved that they had managed to trick the CIA agents. Anna then came to see Leo and told him about Vincent not fulfilling his mission to kill Padre Vicuna. Upon hearing that, Samantha secretly texted Doug and warned him to do his mission immediately so that they would not be suspected by Anna and Leo. Doug, who reads the message, seems indecisive because he does not want to become a murderer. Meanwhile, Doug finally meets Padre Vicuna after one of the tribe members introduces him to the chief who is quite respected by the villagers. At the CIA headquarters, Levine is seen ordering his men to prevent Matt's meeting with Van Roon and send one of the sleeper agents to kill Matt. Ellen, who heard the order, looked very shocked because she never thought that Levine would actually kill Matt who was her best friend. Two CIA agents managed to ambush Van Roon before he met Matt and at the same time, Matt met Haynes who turned out to be alive and had been reprogrammed to kill Matt. Upon knowing that he will not win against Haynes, Matt tries to escape as quickly as possible. But Haynes managed to stop Matt after he fired a few warning shots. Levine and Ellen who were at the CIA headquarters tried to find out what happened to Matt and Haynes, but Matt and Haynes were in an area that was not covered by CCTV cameras, so they could only listen to the conversation between Matt and Haynes which was intercepted through Matt's mobile phone. Meanwhile, Matt and Haynes get into a fierce fight by the river, where Haynes then tries to drown Matt. In the middle of trying to survive, Matt tried to resuscitate Haynes, until finally Matt managed to resuscitate Haynes after he called Haynes by the name Jacob which is Haynes' real name. But unexpectedly, Tara arrived at the scene to save Matt and immediately shot Haynes in the head. Levine and Ellen who heard the gunshot, thought that Haynes had successfully killed Matt. Ellen was shocked and devastated by Matt's death and asked Levine about the person who had ordered him to activate Operation Treadstone, but Levine was reluctant to tell Ellen anything. Meanwhile in Pyongyang, So Hyun finally arrived home and found her husband safe and sound. Dai Pak then tells So Hyun that Colonel Shin has sent Jin Woo out of town to get a better education. However, So Hyun seemed angry when Dai Pak told her about it. In Colombia, Doug secretly follows Padre Vicuna as he heads to a hill. On the way, Doug saw two soldiers who blocked Padre Vicuna to prevent him from delivering a speech that mobilized the population to protest to stop mining. 
Because Padre Vicuna resisted, the soldiers beat him, so Doug immediately attacked the soldiers to save Padre Vicuna. Although Doug was injured, he managed to defeat the soldiers. After that, Doug sent a photo of Padre Vicuna pretending to be dead to Anna as proof that he had completed his mission. Some time later, Doug revealed to Padre Vicuna that he was sent to kill him, and Doug was forced to accept the mission to protect his wife. The scene then switches to 1973 and shows John meeting Petra who is being held in a heavily guarded cell. Petra, who is furious because she thinks John has betrayed her, walks up to him and beats him furiously. John didn't say anything to Petra and immediately left her. Outside Petra's holding cell, John finds a piece of paper containing a message that Petra wrote to him. In the present, Yuri is seen calling Senator Ray and informing him about the attack by Tara and the CIA agents. However, Senator Ray tells Yuri that he has no idea about the operations carried out by CIA agents who acted outside his orders. Meanwhile, Levine, who was at his house, was suddenly surprised by the appearance of Neera Patel who immediately shot Levine, right in his head and killed him. At the same time, Ellen gets a phone call from Matt who informs her that he survived. Ellen was very relieved to find out that Matt was still alive. Shortly afterward, a car arrived at Ellen's house to pick her up and take her somewhere. Ellen was apparently taken to Senator Ray's residence, where she was then escorted to a meeting attended by government officials who wanted information about Operation Treadstone. The film ends by showing Petra who is seen driving somewhere to meet John. The moral that can be learned from this movie is, to never take advantage of others for the sake of taking advantage, because everyone has the right to live their own lives according to their own will.